Hello, Randall families. Alrighty, so what we are now diving into in the wonderful world of fractions is multiplication of fractions. And like I said in my earlier post, it's not that we don't have the skills to do it, it's just that there's a strategy to it, it's time consuming, there's a lot of steps. You might have to ask yourself, am I really finished? Is this finished? Like four or five times before you're actually finished. And students were getting a bit frustrated with that. Um, so if they didn't finish, they had to take it home as homework. And I know they can do it. Uh, so what I'll start with is students have been learning two strategies. So say, for example, we have the problem 25 over 4 multiplied by 18 over 10. We can do it one of two ways. Um, however, the way I would really encourage students to do it is method two, as we've been calling it. The first strategy would for them just to multiply across 25 times 18, four times 10, and then from there they could simplify that fraction. But to me that creates even more work. What a drag. They already don't want to do any of it so you know it would just be easier to do method two rather than have to do two by two two by two digit multiplication and then simplify so the method two that I have been encouraging when multiplying um, fractions with multi-digit numerators or multi-digit denominators works uh, like this so first I'm going to look at one numerator and its opposite denominator what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take those and I'm going to list the greatest common factors. I'm going to list all the factors and students should know this but factors are um, two digits that when combined together come up with the product of the number you're trying to find. So factors of I'm gonna start with four because it's the smallest and would be much easier. So for example four and one Okay, when multiplied together, you get the product of four. So four and one are both factors of four, as well as two and two. Um, I'm gonna write two times two just to show it, but of course, two only once. So those are all my factors of four. So I look over at 18, and I'm hoping that 18 has a factor of four because I wanna find the greatest common factor, meaning that I wanna find the factor that has the largest value. Okay, the greatest value. So. I'm gonna say, well, of course, I know that 18 and one works, but again, I know that 18 is not a factor of four and that if it was one, it would stay the same. So that one, you know, I wrote it, really didn't have to write it. If a student's ready to not have to write all, all those, they can go straight to, okay, can I multiply four by a number to get 18? And it's true, you can multiply four and four together to get 18. So that would make four the greatest common factor. Again, you could do two and nine, but four is larger than two, so four is what we wanna go with. So now that we know that the greatest common factor of 18 and four is four, I'm going to divide 18 by four, and I'm going to divide four by four, and I'm gonna go ahead and take it down and do it uh, this vertical way here to demonstrate a little better, and I'm going to rewrite my problem this time changing my new denominator here, four divided by four is one, and changing my numerator here to four. All right, so now this is going to stay, and now I'm gonna look at these, okay, 25 and 10. So I'm gonna write them again over here. Okay, and I'm gonna list my factors once again, starting with 10 because it is the smaller number with the lesser value. Okay, so I'm hoping 25 has a factor of five because it's the largest number and I know that any number multiplied by 10 is gonna end in zero and 25 ends in five, so that one's not possible. So I'm rooting for five here. And I know that five and five get me 25. So five is my greatest common factor here. So I'm gonna divide 10 by five and 25 by five. All right, so I'm gonna move on down here. All right, the one is still here. The four is still here. I'm gonna put the answer to 10, the uh, quotient to 10 divided by five, and the quotient to 25 divided by five, which is five. All right, and now I went from all this to this nice simple equation here. 
So now I'm going to multiply straight across. So 5 times 4 I know is 20, and 1 times 2 is 2. Now looking at this problem, your student's going to say, oh no, that doesn't work because the numerator is larger than the denominator, mom or dad or grandma or whoever. And they're going to say, okay, we have to divide it because it's improper, can't have that. So 20 divided by 2, 2 times 10 gets you 20, and that cancels out. So that is your answer. So 25 over 4 multiplied by 18 tenths, or 18 over 10, is 10. All right, now completely understand, can completely see why you would not find this appealing or want to do this, but you gotta, you gotta do it. Gotta multiply the fractions. It's gonna help you in further math, okay? Who knows, maybe you're gonna wanna grow up and be a math teacher, you don't know right now. All right, it's gonna be on the map too, so gotta do it. Alrighty, hope this was helpful. Hope you guys can get it done. Have a good night, I believe in you. You guys rock.